Hi guys, it's Elizabeth and I'm over here in my uh, art loft again and I wanted to do another show and tell of some journals I've made. Um, the last one I made on on video was this one which uh, is a stacked spine binding and it's using scrapbooking paper to make each of the pages and the pages are made uh, two at a time. The center ones are together, then the next two, and then the next two. And this one has a little journal at the back. This one's available in my Etsy shop, which is Potal Shop, P-O-T-A-L-S-H-O-P, on Etsy. And I have another one like it, so I have two of them available if you're interested. But what I wanted to show you today was uh, other types of journals that there are out there and the journals that I use. I use one that is like those. It is a stacked spine binding. However, it's a lot larger. It is a nine inches by uh, six inches and it's got butterflies everywhere. So it's made with the uh, Mariposa stack from DCWV and I have uh, stacked things in it everywhere. This has a little belly band and three different cards. These butterflies are not were not on there. This one and this one were not on the cards, but I added those since Mariposa has lots and lots of butterflies, but it didn't have enough for me. Uh, the belly band is with a piece of acetate so that the uh, border by K and Company doesn't hang up on your cards as you're putting them in. This is a quote I just came up with today called butterflies are nature's glitter. So I believe that butterflies add the sparkle to life. So that's what that means. Um, this is a, a rubber stamp. Uh, I forgot the company that makes it. Wait a minute. Nope. Doesn't have it on there, but it's an actual a rubber stamp, clean stamp that uh, has the border around it and I've used it on there I think in two no probably just one space and then that was on the back of a part of one of the uh, Mariposa sheets I added this butterfly and this butterfly back to back so that it would make a little handle for opening that and then this is just a little tuck spot and I have cards in here which I've added butterflies to ones that are blank on the back. I haven't done a lot of uh, journaling in here, but what I have done mostly has to do with butterflies. And you can see that some of the cards are actually just a uh, plain card stock that I've stamped with like a butterfly stamp, added a little butterfly. And some of them have lines, which I used a shelf liner to make the lines. And then on the back, I added a butterfly there. And on this side, it says that uh, I went shopping and my mom would be proud of me. She's no longer with us, but we occasionally remember her when we go to the big three, which was, uh, which is Michael's, Hobby Lobby, and Joanne's all in one day because we used to do that with her when she was alive. Here I have a, a tuck-in spot that is a piece of uh, lace, and this lace uh, is actually tucked in behind this card which is attached to the, the book structure so that it doesn't have any raw edges. Now I know that's not like a lot of uh, junk journals. Junk journals wouldn't care if you had raw edges on there, but this wasn't to be a junk journal. It's supposed to be an artistic one. Put on some butterfly stamps that I purchased, of course, at the post office. And there's some of my writing talking about going to the post office and sending back my niece's doggy bag and other things. The uh, book here is made with, uh, this is a black um, pastel paper and it's done just like the one in the video that I did except that it it's black and then so I add cardstock on each face of the of the page. So you can see that uh, facing pages will have a background added to the black cardstock so they each have a nice frame of black around them. And a lot of my pockets that I do, I have, I just fussy cut a second sheet of paper so that it's exactly like 
so that I put it over the top of it of exactly where the, the uh, design was so the design continues across the pocket. Some more little uh, cards, some of them I've added butterflies to. In this case it's a fold-out card. <coughs> Excuse me. And I've written here again about, uh, even included a uh, post office receipt for sending something to someone and some more butterfly stamps because they don't always have the butterfly stamps there. Um, so I've just, I, when I'm journaling in a book like this, I simply pick a spot that I like, you know, like the place or I think that I'm going to fill up that particular card and then I uh, write there. I don't worry about making it sequential and I just put the date of whenever I uh, write this stuff so that I can keep track of when I've written it. There's another bunch of that uh, shelf liner I use to make lines on it. And when I'm writing, I don't really worry about the lines. Sometimes I write on the lines, and sometimes I just write straight across them. This is just a plain page, so that it, it, but with the background like this, then if I ever came up with a big picture that I wanted to put in there, I would just add that to that page. I left a couple of pages in this journal like that so that it would be um, inviting for pictures to be added. Some more big journaling spot, and you can see that I fixed this so that it would match, matchy matchy on the edges. Big journaling spot. Edge punch. In this case, it was one sheet that I cut up. The sheet would have been like this. But all of these butterflies have been added, so I didn't like the way that it just had plain there, so I made that a card that's much more fancy than the other cards. And they're all white on the back because the Mariposa pack has the white on the back. This one I have a, a little uh, tablet that you can, and I've journaled some there that just is uh, attached with the little brad. And then when it goes into here, it has an acetate behind those butterflies. And then this little thing hangs on them so it doesn't slide out. These are stamped on butterflies. They weren't there originally. This is actually a tuck-in spot because it's not attached over here. Pockets have three sides attached. Tuck-in spots don't. Um, stamps. I use the, um, this is gathered twigs is what that is for edging the cards and, and doing the stamps in this one. And that's the last page of that. So that's one of the ones that I journal in. And then I took a workshop some time ago by Laurie Doctor. Laurie Doctor does a really uh, nice workshop that she teaches you to paint on paper and then uh, do calligraphy of sorts on paper. And you can see some of that. She gives you a poem to write. And you can see it's all written on on the box. So in the workshop we made these little books with painted paper and written stuff. And it's not necessarily stuff that has to be able to be read. It can be read. Some of it can be read. Some of it cannot. I used colored pencils as well as the black, um, what are those pens? Faber Castell, I believe, pens. But we, we washed a, a, we put, uh, a paint wash on a large sheet of paper and then tore up or cut up the sheet of paper to uh, make it our own. This is a sheet that she actually did that she gave us a little piece to put in our uh, in our journals to remember her by. <laughs> uh, I believe that's a she uses the acetate like that on, as her surface to when she's painting and so it gets a lot of uh, interesting marks and paint bits on it and then uh, is very colorful. So after I had I made that, then I made my own where I uh, 
uh, painted a big sheet of paper and I cut it up and tore it up and made it into a journal which I used to document my back pain that I had when I um, slipped it when slip disc what was it called protruding disc something like that anyway it, it's really painful in the back uh, which happened in 2015 and if you look through the book it has a title on it it starts October 2015 and there's a lot of red in the beginning because of course red to me is painful so even though I had washes of blues and greens, I added red with my colored pencil to, to give a feeling to the journal, as well as when I wrote the, the information, <clears throat> talking different, different uh, doctors that I saw in different uh, times that I went to the therapy and so on. And if you notice when you get late, later in the book, then the red gets less and less. And actually, with therapy, I was able to, uh, there's a cute little thing where it's got pain, pain in the leg, pain in the back, pain everywhere. When you get a pain in your back and you hurt your disc and your, your nerves are all messed up, you can get the pain everywhere, not just in your back. So if you have pain in your legs constantly, you should have it looked at because it could be your back, not your legs. And you can see that it got a lot less red by the end of the book because hopefully this is the end of the pain. The therapy worked really well. I still have pain in my back, but the therapy is good for it. So I really liked that format, which was a, an elongated format. So I made myself another one. And it looks like this. I'll just slip this one off. And this one has a Velcro opening. And this one has is Thoughts. And the name of this one is Random Thoughts, which I haven't put on the cover yet. And the way that I made this one is a double pamphlet, which means that you have two pamphlets stitched together. Where's the middle of that? Right there. So it's like having one book and another book two of them stitched together at the same time. So you have two covers on the outside, and this cover is paste paper, a beautiful gold paste paper. But again, this, this paper was in a huge sheet, uh, like 22 by 30, and I painted the swatches of color on it, and then uh, tore it apart so that it has some nice deckled edges, and then made it into the book that I have here. And this one is just random thoughts. So it has all kinds of different things. And I, again, I didn't write it sequentially. And in this case, I didn't really bother to put down the date that I wrote each thing. So there's all kinds of interesting stuff from little teeny tiny writing at the edge to writing like this, which you can actually read if you hold it really still and, and in a horizontal, I mean a vertical type format. I don't think you can read it there, <laughs> but that doesn't really matter. This one says feel this because it had a little lump of paint there so you can actually feel the paint as well as the gold. The gold is really, really... Uh, you can see that I folded some of these so that the pages are not as long as the other ones and that gives you kind of an interesting peekaboo uh, thing of seeing the next page a little bit before you get there. This one's talking about my cousin's death, how it left a hole in, in our lives. This one's talking about contemplating everything and nothing. And that one's talking about the clouds, how they were pretty that day, and how the letters, and you can see that I make my letters go a little bit different than just straight across the thing, just to make more interest. Um, there I was doing a lot of dense writing. Made a little lacy look on that. This one even has writing on it. I don't know if you can... But that makes a really nice texture, even though you can't necessarily read all the, all the words from it. This one's talking about the rain, because we'd had rain so many day so I wrote a poem that said I'm waterlogged and soaked I think we need a boat or maybe we could float away on a rainbow ha <laughs> ha lovely 
anyway. For the back, I was contemplating mediocrity. I never tried to be ordinary. Mediocrity was never my forte. And I just wrote that irregardless of the uh, background colors. Some of them I go with the colors. You can see that this goes with the colors rather than against it. But some of them I just ignore the color and write over the top of everything. <clears throat> this one's talking about life and death. That says death there. And afterlife. A golden moment in the sun. For a moment we live, then we are done. That's another poem I wrote. And I thought this looked like rain or tears or whatever, so it's talking about sadness for whatever reason. What if? What if you knew you would die tomorrow? What would you do today? And then actually in gold right here it says, just do it. And I know that's Nike's motto, but for me it's, it's my motto too. Do what you would do were you to die tomorrow. I mean, if you need to make peace with someone, do that. If you need to make art, do that. If you need to pay someone back, do that. Okay, here's another journal that I made. Well, I didn't make it. This came in a little kit. When I was at the Outer Banks, I purchased it. It's from, see it says Outer Banks. It's a really cute little kit, and it's from Heart of Texas Studio. I tried looking them up, and I don't know that they do this anymore, but you can try too. And I just I added uh, scrapbook paper to the outside of this, painted the outer gold, and stuck it across the front. Then I ex put in an extra B on the uh, on the A part, so that I'd have a pocket to put in some pictures from the Outer Banks, the view from the window the different years. I have the year down at the bottom, 2014, 2013. We stayed in the same condo each time that we went down for about, I don't know, three or four years. Here's a picture of the sunrise that I took. And that's the B, there's the A. There's me in a swimsuit. You don't need to see that. And the sun, sunrise again, several sunrises. And this, you see, I added an extra little a extra little page in there. It's got the uh, binder rings to hold it together. This was a, um, I think that's a DCWV uh, papers. There's me in a swimsuit again. <laughs> well, we got several of those. And my husband flies a kite. There he is flying the kite. But the point is that it was a fun book to do. You can do it with outlines yourself. I mean, you can make your own letters to make your own outlines. Now, this is chipboard, but you could use just uh, things. There's one of our kites. You can use just the um, uh, like cereal boxes and so on. There's several more, and I put extra pages in so that it would have. Uh, places to put more photographs. Here's a photograph that was too long to put in there. I had a, a camera that would take three and put them together. So there's the beach. I wish I was at the beach now, except it'd probably be really cold there. That's a picture down the coastline. Nags Head, North Carolina is out on the Outer Banks, which is a, a barrier island out in the Atlantic. And I put extra little folders, folder in there. But that was a fun, that was a really fun uh, journal to do. And it was one that uh, I've added to multiple years. It wasn't done in one year. There was a rainbow on the way down one time. You can see how it... The whole thing was there. It actually looked like it was at the edge of the road for a little while, but there was no pot of gold. 
I don't know what they're talking about. And this clip then holds on to this belly band because the belly band's being as long and skinny as it is is not strong enough to hold it as is. I even covered the back of it. Okay. This is another one that I think is really a lot of fun. This is a book of windows. And this one, this, these, are, these photographs are put in with little photo holders. But if you look at it one way, you see a little window, you can see something through the window. And since it's a fan fold book, if you get to the, to the back of it, 2012, and you look at it the other way, you're actually seeing this picture then through this window where you used to see this picture through the window when you were going the other way. And this has things from our trip to Hawaii and our trip to, um, I don't think it's to Nagsia, I think it's to Germany. And then this is a friend's uh, field of sunflowers, which I just thought was gorgeous. Trip to Minnesota and just all different different trips in there. But it's a, a, a fan fold book with windows so that you can see from one to the other. If you're interested in seeing how any of these are made, then you can leave me a comment at the, at the end, and we'll see if we can do a process video for you. This one's interesting. This one's done with uh, Kathy Orta's um, way of doing her um, folded spine, and then these are envelopes, and it's really a pretty simple one where it has an envelope at the, at the beginning for you to, with just a blank card in it. And then each of the other envelopes, <clears throat> so it doesn't go in really easily, there we go, has a, a map piece on it with, with an envelope here and a blank card, just a blank uh, craft colored card. And then each of the envelopes has one on the front, one on the back, so there are three I don't know, on the back, I think it's, yeah, on the back it's solid. So the envelope itself is here, and then, so each page has two sets of envelopes. So if you were journaling in this, you could write on the maps if you want, or you could just write on the journaling things which are in the pockets. And these are, I'm not sure who the, the uh, company is that has these maps, but it's a one-sided paper, so that's why I put them on there. And, so that you can't see and and I put them on the front just solid because with the the fact that it's envelope front then I thought it might make it harder to put in and take out a tag and then at the back it has okay that was an easy little one it has a little ball and chain to hold it together it wouldn't hold a lot though if you put a lot of stuff in there I'm afraid that it well, it could, it could bend out a little bit, though. Okay. This one is another painted paper book. It's browns and greens, and it uses the craft tech as the, uh, as the, as the cover for it. And you can see that there are, there are small pages, large pages and small pages, just to make interest. Sort of like a... Um, a junk journal would be, but not really. I mean, it's kind of, it's nicer paper than you usually would have in a junk journal. And the, the painted pages I, I like because they give you, like, you could write just one little sentence right there and then later come back and write a different sentence over here. And the, the little lines of the paintbrush give you an, an, a place of interest to make something different than just a blank page that you would just write on. You could maybe inspire you to write. And my latest journal that I made, <clears throat> I made with my gel prints. And this is it. Oops, let's see, I'll do that. And the cover has a uh, piece of cloth which I had used Clorox on. And Clorox on a black piece of cloth will take some of the some of the paint, some of the ink out of it some of the paint out of it. Dye, that's it, that's the word I want. So this one has gel print with little stickers on it for interest. 
a gel print. It's all gel prints, but the white ones are label sheet that I that purchased some uh, label sheets that were half the sheet tall. So they're they're five and a half by eight and a half, and that's how big the journal is. It's five and a half by eight and a half, and uh, about two inches thick. So these these two are stickers on the backs of the black pages, and the black pages were used and made with gel prints. There's a gel print in there. So on these, you, you could use a white pen or even a ballpoint pen will write so that you could read it if you were to be writing in between the, the spaces. I've read that some people have difficulty with their uh, acrylic paints sticking to each other, but I haven't had any problems with any of my gel prints sticking to each other. Now the outside, um, I mean, the first page feels stickier. Of course, it's not really humid in here, so that might be why. But the first page and last page feel stickier than any of the others. And it may be because of the stuff. It was a, uh, a really a glossy um, stuff that I've had on there. I can't remember what it is. It's from uh, Deco Arts, and it's a real sparkly black or white uh, Stuff. These are little stickers I added along the edge for interest. Every set of uh, two-page spread with the label sheets, I put some extra little stickers along the edge because I thought it would be interesting. And this, of course, is just the back, the other side of this one. So that's one, my one page there. This has three signatures, and there are eight sheets in each signature, which means that back and front, back and front, you would have... Um, 16, 32 in each one, so 3 times 32 is uh, 96 pages. I used a lot of um, the metallics because I like the metallics. This one you can't see that well, but it has a lot of uh, nice shine to it and a lot of pretty turquoise and gold in there. I, I paired it with this one because this one's so colorful. I thought this kind of looked like night and a garden. Of course, they're my, they're my, uh, what I call them, fireworks prints. <laughs> they're so pretty. This one's printed backwards because when I laid down my stencil, I put it down right facing so uh, when I picked up the stuff it came off uh, well, I put the face of it down to, to the to the uh, paint and so when it when I took off the uh, print it came out backwards but that's fun anyway and I made these stickers in different uh, orders because I thought they could you know lead your eye this way rather than just being stickers along the edge A nice white color. Purples and golds. This almost looks like old wallpaper or something that's come off. There's some more of the uh, fireworks, but not quite as dynamic as the other ones. I love the the turquoise blue and the orangish color. It kind of remember reminds me of. Uh, under the Tuscan Sun. That was a really uh, fun movie to watch. And I thought this one turned out really neat. It's got some little purples in the background here, which are really pretty. I haven't decided if I want to use this one myself or try to sell it on my Etsy shop. If you're interested in any of these books, seeing how they're made, let me know. If you're interested in purchasing any of them, let me know that. Um, just give me a comment. If, you're, if you don't want to see any more like this, let me know that too. Anyway, <laughs> subscribe, comment, leave a like. Let me know what you're thinking. Thank you for watching. It was fun. Bye now. Tie this baby up. There we go. Bye-bye.